There we go. So hello and welcome. A uh, lot more people here than I was expecting, but that is awesome because I love largesse and I know so many of you do as well. Um, first of all, hi, I'm uh, Praxula Tarana. I live in the I live in the Kingdom of Artemisia. Um, that's that's Utah, Idaho, Montana. <laughs> we are a very large kingdom. Uh, land mass wise, we are a pretty small kingdom as far as people wise. And I know we have some, um, some differences with how we run largesse, and I will be talking about those. And I would love to have some feedback from other kingdoms as we go. But just so that you know, that's where I'm coming from when it comes to largesse. Um, let's see, I've been in the SCA officially since 1991. I started playing pretty significantly about 12 years ago. Um, I am a research nerd. Largesse wise, I have served as largesse coordinator for four different queens, um, as well as my local area, off and on. Um, I'm a gifter. It's one of the ways in which I communicate, and so largesse is definitely one of those things for me. Um, but anyway, that's kind of giving you a, a background of where I'm coming from. And we'll get going with this. So, first of all, um, largesse is a huge, gigantic, big thing in, in various parts, various cultures. A lot of it is because of gift reciprocity and the creation of bonds. When you give someone a gift, and in most cultures, then they give- Oh, largesse. Excuse me? Oh, sorry. When you give someone a gift, um, and then in, in most cultures, that then you would give a gift back. I mean, they would give a gift back. There's a reciprocity and a creation of bonds. Um, there is certainly in in large the words largesse and charity. Sometimes we get this idea that it comes from non equals, um, but that's not necessarily true. And especially in the SCA. Uh, let's see. Oops. But um, it is certainly a very much a a practice throughout most cultures most time periods. Um, if you want to go looking for period depictions of giving, some of the best places to look are things like the three wise men. You'll see that in a lot of, in, in a lot of manuscripts. You'll also see St. Martin's cloak. You'll frequently see patrons um, giving to people that they are patronizing or um, people that have, have received patronage giving back things. The books are really big. You'll see a lot of books being given as a result of that. Um, and then the outfitting of someone or giving them armor or giving them clothing or giving them um, lands, giving them things like, are sort of the things that you will find for depictions of giving. And those are throughout various um, types of, various <clears throat> types of media. So, there's some great books out there. Um, there's uh, some fabulous articles, and I will be posting those to the event afterwards since I didn't put them on the slide in here like I intended to. <laughs> but uh, next up, we're gonna talk about me because again, I wanna know you, want you to know where I'm coming from. Okay, I like giving. Here are my selfish reasons for why I like giving. Um, it's me an excuse to learn about and meet others. I can be kind of a stalker sometimes. Okay, I'm not a stalker, I swear. But I really like learning about people. I like learning about what their interests are. I like finding out <clears throat> the things that, that they wanna know about. And as a result, when I create largesse, often I keep those things in mind. Um, I get to show off, I'm an artisan and I really enjoy getting to make fun things that I wouldn't necessarily make for myself, but I can make it for somebody else. Um, big old happy glow. I think everyone likes that. 
Um, I have chronic illness and inflammation. I attend a lot of events. I um, show up as often as I can. Um, and sometimes that's really, really great. And sometimes I don't get, I'm not able to show up as, as much as I'd like. Um, the last couple of years, I had a detached retina and then I had to deal with, um, with cataract surgery. And so I didn't get to show up to as many SCA things as I wanted, but I could still make largesse. I could still contribute to my local area. I could still give gifts to my friends. I could still uh, donate to my king and queen. And so things that I were, was doing were still part of the kingdom. People would still, were still getting to interact with me and I was getting to interact with them. And I think that's a big important part of largesse. Um, I, I like having a reason to go somewhere. And so um, I'm, not a, I'm not a fighter. I am, I occasionally do archery, but it's very infrequent. I, there's not a lot of reason for me to come to an event, quote unquote. I mean, I love teaching, I like art, but there's not as many activities at some events. But if I can go and support others, bring tokens, um, make things, that's, that's what, an excuse for me to be involved and to, and to show up. My husband also really appreciates me uh, not having as many things in my garage because I also really, really, really like to shop. <laughs> so if I'm shopping for supplies that I make into things and give to other people, it's less piling up in my sewing room. Um, here's the non-selfish ones. When you give someone a gift, they feel seen and they feel supported. And that can sometimes make a huge difference in retention. Um, someone I at the time has become, she's become a, a fabulous friend. But at the time, I, I sort of vaguely knew her and I made her, uh, I made her a bag at, just because I had thought of her. And, and I came to find out later that that's one of the things that kept her from walking away. Um, being, being noticed, being seen. Those are really important things. And largesse is the physical manifestation of that. We don't always get awards, but we can always be seen by the people we're surrounded by. And I think that's a huge deal. Okay. Um, people get things they need or can pass along. Uh, so stuff gets in circulation. Um, sometimes pe people get supplies to try something new. Sometimes they know exactly the person that it needs to go to. And so giving, giving gifts gets those things out in the world. Um, again, it brings people together. Um, I know I've had a lot of fun either teaching classes on how to do largesse or getting people together to make largesse. Um, the the uh, largesse derbies have been a huge deal and I'm so grateful that people put those together and started that, that, um, that push to really get artisans being able to showcase what they do and give it and, and interact with one another. And I think that's a fabulous thing. Um, it also adds to the grandeur and grace of the SCA. I like pomp, I like circumstance, I like flags, I like color, I like music, I like all those sorts of things. And I think most of us do, that's why we play, at least to some extent. And so having one more little thing that we can add to bring that dream closer to ourselves, I think it's important. And giving our nobility, the ability to give things, to give that gift to others, to recognize those others really adds to our game because they aren't going to be able to afford it all on their own. Um, plus also, you know, more, more minds are better, more people looking out, more people coming up with ideas, more people seeing other people. I think these are all important things. Okay, like I said before, I'm gonna talk a little bit about an inner, inner kingdom anthropology. I come from Artemisia. Um, Artemisia does not have a backstock of largesse. We give it out as fast as we make it. 
Um, we don't have anything. We don't have anything sitting around. Now I know that is not true for most kingdoms. Um, but so that, that is going to shade things a little bit for me. Um, I know some kingdoms have a largest officer who was always the largest officer. Sometimes they're attached to the regalia office. Um, Artemisia does theirs where the individual king and queen assign someone to, to do their largest if they choose to. Sometimes the queens do it on their own, um, which adds quite a bit to their burden. But um, that, that depends on, it depends on the kingdom. So if you don't know what your kingdom is like, ask. That's the best I can tell you. Um, talk to other people who make largesse. Talk to the retinue of your of your royalty or, or your baronage. See what what their process is. Um, check in to see if there's a contact person. If there is a contact person, sometimes they have they're really proactive and will tell you, hey, the king and queen are going to these wars this year and we could use these things. Oh Other times they don't, often because this is a gift. Someone is doing this out of the goodness of themselves and they don't necessarily, I know I often do not necessarily feel like I have the right to go, hey, can you make this for me for free? <laughs> so if it's something you wanna do, let it be known. Um, they're not ignoring you. They're not uh, not wanting these things, but there's sometimes that little bit of, of tension with asking something, asking somebody for something, just like people who make largesse often go, I don't know what to make. I, I don't know what to give. I don't know what the right thing is. So opening lines of communication is sometimes hard. I understand that. I really do. Um, and so it's one of those things that I try to do when I am involved with largesse is to say, hey, we're gonna do we're gonna do this, or hey, here's some suggestions, or I really like posting patterns. Um, and I have found that when I do that, I often get people interested in it, willing to do it because they have a they have a direction. So ask around, ask if there's a contact person, if if that doesn't work, try the, the, um, the Chamberlain or the head of retinue or whatever for whoever you wanna to donate to and see if, see if they have a, a, a procedure. See if they have some suggestions. Um, like I said, our Namesia doesn't have a backstock. So we have the advantage of being able to be very personal because we're normally making it for the next thing, um, which is great but it also can, can rush artisans. Um, so we, we are trying to be a little bit more proactive about getting some backstock, getting some things to have sit, sitting around. Um, but if you are making largesse, some of the things that I think, I think, again, these are all my personal opinions, I think can be helpful is think about the types of people who usually receive largesse. A lot of people who receive largesse are often connected to the event, to the event staff. The cooks, the event stewards, uh, security, uh, the, the co-autocrat, the marshals, people that have been involved with putting things out there and, and assisting and being a lot of our, a lot of our service people. Um, also, you have a lot of largesse that is going to, if, you're, if your kingdom is traveling, um, they're going to other royals at wars, they're going to... Um, they're going to barons and baronesses. And in most cases, they will, they will then uh, take that largesse and, and give it to other people, you know, but, but sort of kind of think about who are the kind of people that are going to be getting these things. I, I find that helpful. Um, another thing to look at is what your royal or baronial progress looks like. Looks like. Take a look at your calendar, um, kind of see what's coming up. Unfortunately, with a lot of the wars, especially if you're, if you're a kingdom like us, who is sort of in the middle of nowhere and doesn't always go to some of the larger wars on in every occasion, um, when it comes to determining who's gifting to who, um, those, those deadlines can be kind of tight. But uh, 
but having have a lookout for those. Know that those sorts of things are coming if you if you want to be if you want to be involved in making them. Also, know that you know gen generic stuff is good as well. Small stuff is just as good as big stuff. Having a mix is good. Um, also, being aware of things like people will be traveling, so um, while the giant fabulous bench is giant and fabulous, it may not be something that that, for instance, my kingdom can haul to Penzik. Because um, we're, we're 10, 10 hours from top to bottom in the kingdom, let alone the two days it takes to go across, across country. So, so keep those sorts of things in mind. Keep some of, some of the realities of, of that. Let's see. Hey, Mitri. Yeah. Can you turn get off the game? My bandwidth is bad. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So sorry about the connection. Okay. Um, next thing. Again, this is one of my personal things. Some things to remind the kind. Don't forget that you can give largesse yourself. Um, you, you can make things and give them to other people on your own as your own recognition. While it is lovely and nice to have your, your royals and your nobility give things, you yourself can also give largesse. Um, tokens are really important, at least in my world. They are an I see you. I know I saw you. I saw you do this amazing act. I saw you help that child. I saw you help out in the kitchen. I saw you were one of the people that was walking around picking up trash. I s those sorts of things are again important. They really support and having a physical thing to see, to have, to hold in your hand years later really does enforce those behaviors <laughs> and they make people happy. Um, I, I know when I first came in, one of, the, one of the kids in my local group had been given this bead. He'd been given that bead for doing something that the individual who gave the bead doesn't even remember, but it was in his drawer six years later. It was a story he would still tell. It was important. Those things are important. Um, next up, don't overextend yourself. People with big hearts tend to do too much. They can. Don't. If you don't have the financial ability to be doing the largesse that you're doing, step back. There are other things you can do to help. There are other ways you can participate in largesse. Um, so, but don't overextend yourself. Don't overextend yourself with time. Don't overextend yourself with money. Don't overextend yourself with commitments, whether you've made them to other people or just to yourself. It's okay. You can, you can step back if you need to. Um, I'm sorry, am I still, it keep, keeps telling me that my internet connection is, is unstable and I'm so sorry about that. I am recording this and I will put it on later. So if, it, if, it's, if it's going bad and being a problem, um, we'll hopefully have a clean copy later and I'm so sorry. Um, egg other artisans on. Posting pattern, posting ideas, supporting other artists is a form of largesse too teaching classes on, on things to make. Um, all of these are contributing. Absolutely, largesses and stuff, that, just stuff that you personally make. Using them, getting them out, absolutely. Okay, here's a couple of basic guidelines. Again, this is my views, so, you know, 
Okay, but this one I think is important and I think pretty much everybody was gonna agree on it. Don't give something you wouldn't be excited to get. If, if it's not something you want or, or you look at it and go, eh, I don't need this anymore. Okay, if it was something that you were previously excited about and you've just changed your, changed your hobby habits, that's one thing. But if it's, well, this is okay, it's kind of whatever, no. Conversely, don't be a crazy perfect perfectionist. If you have, if you've been working on some leather working and you have um, some different pieces that you've done, and you know this one has a little bit of a smudge and it's and it's driven you crazy, or you made this really great hat but you've stared at it so long that you hate it, that is different. That is artist perfectionism coming in. Let it go. It's probably a great gift. If you're concerned, ask somebody, ask a friend, ask someone else around, see what they think, if, they're, if they would be excited to get it as a gift. Next up, labeling. Label your things. I am so bad at this. I have to constantly yell at myself about it. I have to give, schedule the time into when I'm making largesse or purchasing largesse or whatever, I have to make it part of it because if not, I'm the individual who doesn't wrap Christmas presents. That's me. I, I'm so bad at it, but you need to. Um, you need to for a number of reasons. First of all, if you were doing anything that is perishable, one, probably not the best of choices, but nonetheless, if that's what you're gonna do, and it's okay, label, label the use by date, make sure you, that you put in what is involved, what ingredients are in it so that people can be safe. Um, those are not my recommendations, but sometimes they're awesome and sometimes there's something that people are, are looking for, so there's not a hard and fast any, anyway. But if you're gonna do it, make sure you put your ingredients and, and your dates and how to store it. Also, um, Further labeling. Another reason to label. Maybe what you made is the most awesome thing ever and somebody wants 12 of them. Um, and you know, they'll pay you or whatever. And you're like, well, yeah, but I don't want to toot my own horn. Toot your own horn. Please. It's one of those things. It's one, you know, if you're making something and gifting it, you're allowed to make something super cool and be proud of that you made something super cool. Um, I'll, maybe somebody wants sees this super cool thing or they saw th something that they'd read about and they want to know more or they just want to have somebody to geek out with and having your name on having your contact information on the label makes it so they can find you um really 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 label it put what it is put if they're you know what the materials are put what who you are Put where you're from, what it is, what it's used for, if you if there's any question at all. Um, so, and I think this is one of those things that I find a little bit of packaging or some historical context on a card can really make something that more exciting. If if you get two beads, you would probably go, oh, cool, these are two beads. But if you come to find out these are two beads based on this historical find by this artisan who they never give these things out honestly there are people you know an event down who are going to fight over them that's important information to have um it makes it that much cooler it makes it that much more meaningful please please if you can let someone know what it is um, it's also less likely to get lost if you're doing something small and you put it on a card in a little bit of, you know, in a little bit of wrapping, whatever that is. It makes it easier for people. It makes it more useful. A little bit of ribbon makes it look that much cooler and people are excited about it. Maybe mix it up a little. Okay. This is me being blunt. But if you love 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 making needle books it's all you ever make you give people needle books every you give a thing of needle books every two months 
um, you might want to check and make sure that they still need needle books. If you still want to continue making needle books, maybe give them to a different group or check into that or try a different style or try making something a little different. Just, just as a little bit to make sure that we don't have so many that they're sitting and not being used and not being meaningfully gifted. Okay, going back and looking at the chat. Label it so people know what it is. It may be obvious to the maker, but someone who gets it may have no idea. Absolutely, yeah. What is this? Oh, that's what that is. Oh, cool. That's a salt spoon that I need it. I didn't know I needed one of those, but now I definitely do. And I think that's super awesome. And I have one and it's amazing. Or um, a business card. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, Vista print is awesome for that or just print it on your computer. Uh, but using a, a card of some kind is, is very helpful because it's not, it's not, um, it doesn't get ripped. So business card places that offer mini cards. Cool, cool tip. I use, I've used regular ones and I've never tried the mini, but that's a good idea. Um, and here's one as a reminder for me and a reminder for anyone else. If you have anything whatsoever to do with giving largesse, do whatever you can to get thank you notes and to be as transparent as possible with where this stuff is going. Um, it is a lot easier for artisans to keep making things, for people to keep donating things, for people to be excited about stuff when they know that whatever it is they've made and given is being given, is being used, is being loved, has found a new home. Those are important things. And I know, I know, because I've done it too. It is really hard sometimes to know, to be at the last minute when you're like, okay, oh no, we needed this and I didn't know I needed it and I threw it together and crap, where did that go? That can be hard. It really, really can. But if you can, we all, you know, we all have things that are less than optimal. Sometimes stuff happens, but please, if you can, let, let the people that donate largesse know that their largesse is being used because it means you get more largesse. It means that people are excited. It means, that the artisans are being seen while they're seeing other people. Okay, next up. As stated earlier, you do not have to be an artisan to give largesse, although you probably are, even if you don't consider yourself one. <laughs> um, if you can give largesse without, without ever making a thing. Gift certificates, even better if it's to an SDA merchant, or I know some merchants do like co coins and things like that. Um, materials. One of the most historically accurate forms of, mater of, ma of largesse is material. Fabrics. I mean, Byzantium had a whole political structure built on the giving of silk. Fabric, leather, paper and scribal supplies, yarn and threads. There are so many options that you can, that you can give out that you can just purchase and find. Yes, absolutely, that is a fabulous idea, taking a picture of the package that's going out and listing each artisan and posting it to the Kingdom page is, is fabulous. It, it inspires the people who gave the things. It inspires people that now can see, oh, these amazing things are happening. And so it's, it's got really great, great use for it and I've, I've done it when I, when I can, and it does. People are excited by it. Um, patronage is incredibly period. Support other artists, support artists. Um, do that, you can do that financially. You can do that by giving them materials. You can do that by babysitting their kids while they make things or doing their dishes or what, whatever it is that you can do that can free them up is useful and involves you in largesse. Or even just giving them an idea. Sometimes that's, that's a form of largesse. Um, these are all things that are involved and don't require you to have 
huge, amazing skills. Um, you, you can certainly, if you want to give, you can give. There are, there are tons of ways with time, um, know-how, materials. Um, just, you know, when I sew, one of the best things ever is just to have someone sit with me. That, that's meaningful. So these are all things that you can investigate and see. Use your expertise. Um, there's a lot of really great ideas for just pulling things together, putting together fighter kits with things like rivets and uh, duct tape or whatever it is that they need to, to re you know, some sandpaper for rapier fighters, some, uh, some various, you know, a little bit of first aid, a couple of band-aids, things like that. Putting them in, a, in one place and giving them as a gift is, is actually very, very useful. Um, if you are an artist, also consider kit, kits. I mean, making a complete item is awesome, but putting together something using your expertise is also great because if someone doesn't know how to do something, they also don't know where to buy the materials or they you know, now need to buy a huge, gigantic amount of paint in order to get all the colors they want, or they need to buy all of this you know, fabric when they, all they really needed was two six inch squares or whatever it is like that. Put together a kit, um, give them some instructions or, or put the instructions up online and just give them a URL to that. I mean, there's, there's lots of possibilities there. Um, but use, use, your, use your expertise. You don't necessarily have to make it. It's sometimes more exciting for them to get to make it, get to make it themselves and to try something new because so many of us like to try things. And it's a really, really, really nice one to either find out that you absolutely adore something and want to go out and buy the supplies or try something, find out you hate it, and thus not have the pile of supplies in your garage six years later. <laughs> um, supporting our scribes is always a big one. That's something that's, that's super important. Scribal supplies are always needed. Uh, so that's, that's a big one. Oops, let me back here. Another one, huh. another one that I find really important and useful that you can use things that you, don't, you might, that are modern skills that you might not consider SCA skills. Have you considered putting together a songbook or poems or embroidery patterns? There are so many public domain things. Um, my, my big research project, the thing that I absolutely adore is um, the 150 or so pattern books for embroidery and lace that were published starting in 1524. And it's, it's my soapbox. I want everyone to use them and be aware of them and know they're out there. I'm putting, you know, a little, just a little brochure of three or four of those together, printing it out. Um, I, I think that makes great largesse. If you want to make a little book, you can put together, you know, four or five pages. Uh, the East Kingdom just did as part of their triathlon. They had a little, a little video on super simple pamphlet stitch. There, it's certainly out there. It's, it, it involves your printer, a little bit of paper, um, almost no time, and you have made something pretty darn cool and pretty darn useful. Well, I'm glad I just gave you a great idea because I think it's super awesome. I think that that one's one of those things, especially as me, who I am not necessarily great with layout, but you know, I know the stuff is out there. Go look at archive org. There is so many things, so many how-to books that are public domain that you can just print out as is, or you can mess around with and make them a little bit more, pick a thing here or there. Uh, go out, find fun stuff, print it out, make it a little book. Um, it, it's prob you probably have the materials to do it, and I think they make outstanding largesse. Or things like, you know, pick some of the Pick some songs, decide a playlist of, th of things that you would like to teach people to sing. 
mean, this is this can be imaginary or real. You could choose to actually use this and do it, but put together, you know, some songs that you think would be fun around a campfire that would be nice for people to have the words to. Put it together. There's lots of ideas that way. Okay, the next couple of slides are just some ideas, just bunches and bunches of ideas. Um, and and mostly so that I had them here so we can run through some of them. Yeah, game boards, dice bags, absolutely add the add the uh, the directions and things. Sword lanyards, pouches, reversible pouch that had four game boards. Um, all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, there's, it's, once you start looking at everything and really thinking about what, what makes Largess, what makes Largess is somebody needs it, somebody wants it, and will appreciate it. That's what makes it Largess. Um, and like I said, especially if you personally are giving it, that's real easy to do. But here's some other ideas, embroidered pouches, handkerchiefs, bookmarks, brooches, necklace, arm rings. Arm rings are great, especially because uh, they can be used by people of all sizes and interests. Uh, a lot of stuff tends to go to people who, who like to sew, just because those are the sorts of ideas that other people who like to sew come up with, but there are certainly other ideas out there. Um, Woodcuts, blocks for printing, um, and you can make those pretty, pretty easily you could make stencils. Stencils are super, super cool to, to work with. Um, you can cut those out of plastic. You can make those out of thin sh sheets of, of cardboard or um, all kinds of options there. If you do searches for, for SCA large S, you're going to turn up quite a bit. Also, when you do that search, make sure you look for L-A-R-G-E-S-S-E -S -S -E or L-A-R-G-E-S-S. -S it'll be listed several ways. So make sure you're looking at both. Um, medieval largesse, Renaissance largesse, SCA largesse, um, historical largesse, historical, you know, alter your things, you can find lots. Pinterest has a lot of obviously, you know, this is kind of where it, where it excels. It may not excel in a lot of other places, but on the finding how to projects, it's pretty good. Uh, fans, felted bags, cloth buttons, aprons, hoods, um, toys. We say toys for kids, but they're really not for kids. We like them. <laughs> Every time I've tried to give away one of my felt toys, I've had a very disappointed adult who didn't get it. So um, they are not just for children. <laughs> Embroidered mirrors. When I say that, I was going to bring a picture, but um, just a little round mirror and you can put a little a little case around it of felts, so it's got like a uh, felt round, and you put. Anyway, I will I will post that that how to as well because it's one of my favorites. Painted thank you cards, thread winders, which are basically just a piece of shaped bone or wood, scroll cases for traveling and taking things home, um, silverware holders caps include sleeping hats i think that was important artemisia recently well not super recently but they did a a uh, one of our one of our kingdom fundraisers was for beanies and i was like i don't need a beanie and i started sleeping in it when i was camping and it was one of the most awesome things ever i was no longer freezing in the morning so things like that I think that they make great ones, not just to wear, you know, out and about, but for that. Uh, hand sanitizer has always been on my list, but I did add masks to it because that's one of those things that can be used, that's gonna be more and more useful. Penners, brush rolls for scribes, scribal supplies in general. Veil pins, veil pins are awesome and amazing. Um, one, because I lose them constantly, but I think they work great for not just pinning on veils, but they're nice to just have as a little token. Those are really a good one that's super fast and easy. Um, spices, spoons, embroidered towels, 
linen napkins when you're cutting your when you're cutting your your tunic if you happen to have any leftover linen that you didn't use um cut it into a, a couple of squares either hem the edge or zigzag and then fray, fray that out and you've got a napkin and those are useful um wet bags for feast gear so where you just do a, a bag that you put inside um some kind of lining normally something like a a uh a Ziploc bag type of thing. Cards, dice, games, hand flags for cheering on fighters. Okay, this one's one of my silliness things, but if you have a triangle of felt or linen, some paint, some glue, and a dowel, you can make a little cheering flag for fighters, and they come across pretty, pretty well. People like them. You know, some of us only attend certain sporting events, and this is the sporting event. <laughs> So that, that's one of those silly things that actually go over surprisingly well. Waxed and printed cup covers. Yes, those are amazing. I love those. There is, an, there is a largesse makers group on Facebook, which is fantastic. I can't recommend that one enough. Um, yep, making, making thrown weapon, I mean, making a, uh, Thank you cards, first aid kits. Sword lanyards, oh, that's a good one I hadn't really thought about. Uh, award cords, obviously. Um, let's see. Spice boxes for cooks also. Those are also super great, especially if you include a recipe or two. Um, again, the, your packaging can make such a huge difference and make something so much more cool if you give just a little bit of, you know, we're all research nerds here together. So if you give them some place to start looking for, for things. Simple toys, yeah. Plain balls, rag dolls, cup and ball. Very much so. And like I said, those, those do get given to children, but um, most, many of us adults like them and want them as well. So, all righty. So I think I have. One more slide, which is just a few more ideas. Arming caps, coifs, calls, hair sticks, poisonment, comb case, combs. You can you can buy um, combs when we can order from India. They often have those. The safety pin type fibula, those are super useful. A uh, flat cut out of a, wool, of a wood doll or a horse shape, peg dolls. Um, those sorts of things are all options. And I just have gotten this far because this is so that I can keep keep adding as as I go. As I keep coming up, I keep finding great ideas that other people have come up with and want to add them to my to my list. Small trebuchets. <laughs> Plus, yeah, kits for disappointed adults is a great idea. The well, I didn't make enough, but here, make your own. <laughs> Super great. Okay. I am going to turn off the recording and I'm gonna open up for for things. Any